How do you locate a two-way cleanout when you've got to do a sewer water test? In this video, I show you how we run a camera in the sewer, locate it, but then at the end, there's a little tip. So guys, let me know what you think. So guys, as you can see, this is a little bit different. We've been probing around the ground because we're trying to find the cleanouts. We need to do a sewer water test on this house because it's just had foundation work. Y'all seen me do the sewer water test or hydrostatic test based on new home buyers. But one thing that we also do, which has been really good for our business, is to actually do a sewer water test after they've had foundation work done. Now, why would that be important? Because the foundation company wants to make sure there's no water leaks under the slab after they do their work. Leaks under a slab can actually lead to foundation problems. Now, we don't know what came first, the foundation problem or the plumbing leak, but we do know that until we find these two-way cleanouts, we can't properly test the sewer lines under the house. Now, we've got the valve box here right now. I've looked at vent pipes on the roof, and I really think that the sewer lines are here close. I really think that they're here close, but until we know that for sure, we can't do the test. So what we're gonna do, I found a couple of cleanouts around the house and I actually tried sticking my camera into a two inch cleanout in the kitchen area. Now I almost got my camera hung up. We fought to get it back out, but what we've decided, we found a three inch wall cleanout in the back of the house. We're gonna go ahead and run the camera in from there, turn on the locator, and once we know that we're outside of the house, we can locate it and find out exactly where the sewer is. So that's what we wanna show you and how we're gonna do it today. So this is the small clean out I was telling you about. It's two inch. Even though I took the head protector off my camera, whenever I stuck it in, and I want you to know it took me about 10 seconds to stick it in, stuck it in, got turned down, tried to pull it back out because I had stuff all over my lens, it would not come out. About 10 seconds to get it in, I fought it for about 20 minutes to get it back out. I had to use screwdrivers, I had to use plunger handles, I had to use all kinds of things to get in there and pry on that cord to get it up to where I could finally get it out. Guys, be really careful sticking your cameras in. Don't get them stuck, it's a pain. So guys, as you can tell, this is a three inch plug. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna run the camera in it. Now, I've still got my head on here, and since this is a three inch line, I can leave it on, but I'm gonna make sure that my camera lens is really clean. That way I know I can see things well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything set. I am recording. So what I like to do is actually just kind of zoom around the backyard and show people that it's their house. Now I've got a self-leveling head so that normally does what it's supposed to do. Now, I'm gonna leave the head on it since this one's three inch, but I'm gonna open it up and I can see from looking inside here, I've got PVC. <clears throat> now I'm gonna stick it in, I'm gonna turn it, and I want you to notice something really quick because I noticed it in the other end, is we've already got roots, or we've already got cast iron pipe right here at the bottom, so I'm not gonna say that's roots. That could just be dirt, cobwebs, it could be things like that, but as we go in, and make our turn, we can see this line is really pretty full, pretty clogged up. Now, I wanna see if I can go past it because you've got a lot of build up there. Now, this house is probably 50, 60 years old. And getting past this is kinda of hard. Now, I've got a PVC line here. And I can tell by looking, all I'm trying to do is get through the build up. Now you can see it all right here from looking at the camera on the inside. And I've got the lights turned, I believe, all the way up. And I there's did. a lot of jobs that we now go on. you can on. see spiders. That people Actually, have see that fly right there on the right? I know this is going to sound crazy. As soon as they tell me that, that literally tells me there's already a break. Got a break because what that sewer, is, that's a sewer, sewer flies down in there. And there's a lot of jobs that we go on that people have flies coming up in their shower. And as soon as they tell me that, I already know they've got a break in their sewer because they've got sewer flies down in there. Now, I'm trying to get past this and I'm not having any luck. So I think that what we're probably gonna have to do is pull the sewer machine out and take a run through it. Because I'm saying that this is just build up, that could be 
dirt or mud or something like that, and as I'm pulling out slowly, I'm looking for any breaks or anything. I see the turn at the bottom of the 90, but then I am just all in the middle of it right here. Now that does look like a buildup of possibly dirt or something like that. Okay, now right there I got past it. Okay, now see there, I've got more flies right there on top. You see that? Okay, so we're running. I've got a little water there in the bottom, so I know that we've got some backfall issues. Actually, I've got quite a bit of water right there. I'm going through. Now, you've heard a channel rot, and this is almost a sign of it. See how on the sides of the pipes, it comes down and around, but then at the bottom, it's like it drops a little bit more? The bottom of that pipe could either be rotted out or starting to rot out. Got a lot of buildup and scale on the inside of the pipe, but, you know, you're, I mean, you're looking at a cast iron line that's probably 50 years old. Now, we've got an offset here, and it's kind of funny because it doesn't look like a true 45 or anything. There's just a little bit of an offset to the left right there, and we're holding water. Now, did you see the way the camera jumped back up? So there's definitely an offset or a break or something right there. Now, all we're trying to do right now is locate the sewers in the front, or locate the cleanouts in the front, so we can do the sewer water test. Now, there's another weird angle. See how it goes in real smooth, and then it kind of drops and goes off to the right? right there. Now what I'm doing, I'm 46, 47 feet in, so now I'm starting to look for cleanouts that might be outside the front edge of the house. Okay, now there's another weird angle or something, but that almost looks like a, there might be a fitting there. So that could be a cleanout right there on top. Now I've got a self-leveling head, so like y'all saw me, okay, so that's up to the right. There's a fitting right there going up to the right at a 45 degree, but then there's a weird angle there. I don't like that. Now I'm still looking along the top of the pipe because that's where I'm looking for my cleanouts if there's any here. Now it says I'm 60 feet in. Now I'm holding water right here again, and that's not a good sign. That means that there's backfall. There's issues, and my camera head is completely underwater. Now I come back up right there. Now I am about 70 feet in. I've got little signs of roots here and there. Now that almost looks like something going straight out the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it right here. And I'm going to turn on the locator, and I'm actually going to go out front and see if I can find this. All right, so we've been looking around front, and it's really funny because I told y'all earlier, I thought the cleanouts would be over there. Right now, we're picking up the reading over here. So I'm turning my scout back on, and I'm going to get right down on one of my indicators. And it's right here, and I'm picking up about 2,400 on the meter. So we've already shot the other side, and what we know is right now the head of our camera is right out here under the bushes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to pull the camera out about 10 feet, and then I'm going to come out and locate it again because I need to find out is it taking me towards the front of the house here or is it taking me towards the front of the house here. So let me go move the camera. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm taking it off pause now. So we know that we're about 10 or 12 feet too far out. So I'm pulling back and just kind of looking real slow along the top just to see if I can see any cleanouts anywhere. And I don't want to come back too far because I want to make sure that I can locate that camera right where it goes outside. So, you know, I said this thing a while ago about those roots right there on top, and that's a possibility that there's a clean out there, and I'm just I'm not seeing it from the way it is. Now, that almost looks like something on top of the pop there. So I'm going to stop right there, and I'm going to pause it, and I'm going to go out front and do it again. Okay, so now I know I'm on. We found it over here a while ago, and we pulled in about 10 or 12 feet. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the numbers on my dial to see when they go up. And you can tell by the sound that it's going up over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first red marker, 
<laughs> Look what I found. Man, literally my first red marker is right under what appears to be a piece of four inch pipe. Covered up in roots, but very easy to find. It's funny because that's where my first indicator is. My second one is right here. So I know that with the rigid scout, I can actually go right between them where I get my crossbar, line up right on it, look at my level, level it up, rotate it like it says, and I know that my sewer is two feet, eight inches deep right here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off because I've got one clean out right there. I'd be willing to bet if we keep looking around, we find another one right there. So I'm gonna take it off pause now because I know that I was literally right between the clean out and the bushes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in slowly and look along the top just to see if I can actually see. Now, remember, this is where the camera dropped and as you can see right here on the right, there's a fitting. As you can see here, I've got water floating so what I'm gonna try and do is get to and see that's where we were underwater. So I would be willing to bet that that two-way clean out is dropped down, it's holding water, and I'd also be willing to bet that when we do a sewer water test, it's probably not gonna hold. I hate to say it, but I mean, I'm just, I'm looking at this like, this is probably not gonna be good. Uh, whenever I try to come through just to see if I can see the clean outs on the top, and I really can't see anything, but you know, up here at the very top, right about here is where it would be. And I don't see even any lines on the side where those clean out fittings could be pointing up. So I'm gonna come back past it a little bit. Yeah, I'm not having any luck there. All right, so we just keep coming back. So what I'm gonna do now is start making sure I'm putting the clean cable back in. And clean this as I come in go ahead and pull my camera all the way in. Now, I also like to look at it as I'm coming back in because you never know what you're gonna see on the way back in that maybe you didn't see on the way out. Right there, what is this on top? That almost looks like roots growing in. That does look like roots right there. And guys, I hate to say it, if roots are getting in, water's getting out. And that means the sewer water test probably will not pass. And I say that, the water test, and it almost looked like a little rat hanging by his tail from the top of the sewer. That's not, that's probably a root, but it looked like a rat. And I've got a fitting right here going off to the right, right there. So that's a branch line going to the right. And as you can see by the water setting in the bottom, that's gonna be a 45 degree, so it goes up at an angle. It could turn horizontal and come up and catch something else or something like that. There's a lot of buildup on the inside of the pipes, but I'll tell you what, for the most part, they really don't look that bad. When you see me jerk my camera like that, I'm not trying to push it or pull it past anything. I'm just trying to straighten up my head and make sure it's not turned a certain direction. That way I can see all the way around it, like right there. That's a good view of the inside of the sewer line. And again, there's a weird fitting right there, a weird angle. And that could just be a 22 and a half or something, because there's just kind of a weird offset there. Or it could actually be a, a break. Well, that almost looked like something going off to the left right there. But see, that looks like a break because that looks like on each side of it, like, like there's something coming in. I see right there's where I'm concerned about the bottom of the pipe. The way you've got that big buildup right there on the right. Now that could just be a toilet paper buildup or something like that. Or it could be that the bottom of the pipe's gone away and, and that's why you're starting to see that channel right down in the bottom of it. I see anytime you see the funny shapes like that, that makes me think there's something wrong. It's like the inside of the right side of the pipe. There's either something there that doesn't look like just corrosion. That's too much of a build up there. But as you see, I'm holding water here. So it could be that toilet paper and different materials have stuck to the inside of the pipe along the years. It almost looked like roots on the left side, but when I went back in, it didn't. 
See, that's another thing too, as we go in here, look at that angle. See how you can see the pipe right there? It almost looks like it drops a little bit. And all these things point at different things like that. There's roots right there. So that's definitely roots, and we're only five or six feet in. And there's a big buildup of them. Now we're back into that area where I had a hard time pushing it through a while ago. So with the roots in there, that makes me think this is probably dirt, mud, things like that along the bottom. As we come in and up. So what you see right here, we've got all kinds of mud along our camera. Now, that's probably from years of the line being broken and not doing too good. And this mud has built up over the years and this is causing lots of problems. And she had to have foundation work done. By looking at this, I'm thinking maybe the plumbing paid a, played a part in that. Uh, plumbing leaks over the years, getting the mud wet, making it expand and contract, it's going to cause problems, and that may be what causes problems. <laughs> really? Come on. Pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> Thought you might like that. Oh! If this is your first time here, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on anything. And if you like these videos, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. Now, we've got other videos where I actually show me doing the sewer water test. Check that one out too, because that is more great information. I'm Roger Wakefield, Elite AP, the expert plumber, and I'll see you on the next video if you don't get flushed.